Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm back with a movie review. After just taking a short time, you know, just focusing on commercial breaks that I found online and posted it on my channel and just taking some time to watch movies on a very hot summer. Yeah, you know, I had to put the air conditioner on to keep everything cool. Yeah, you know, it does make me feel tired and all. But this review is going to be a dedication to the late, great, and wonderful actress, very beautiful too, and talented, named Kelly Preston, who happens to be actor John Travolta's wife and family. You know, they actually had kids. That includes um, that one son that they had who actually had autism named Jet, no longer with us also. But Kelly was a natural. She actually had a great career. She's not only a singer too, uh, but she also had done several films uh, in the 80s and 90s, even in the 2000s and 2010s. Uh, most notably, she was in a 50s style romantic comedy called Mischief, which is a very rare gem. She was very... Uh, sexy and a knockout <laughs> but then she went on to do a space camp with Leah Thompson along with Joaquin Phoenix known as Leaf you know, the brother of River Phoenix before he became well known uh, joining in with Cape Capshaw and Tom Skerritt and then she went on to follow um, a lot of string of several films um, no matter what role she plays. I mean, she was in movies like Spellbound, The Experts, which also stars John Travolta, which that happens to be the film that definitely made them a real-life couple with Ira Gross. Uh, she was in the movie Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. So I'm pretty sure you'll recognize her from there. Uh, she was even in the, a comedy called uh, Secret Admirer, with C. Thomas Howell and Lori Laughlin, which I know best known for playing Rebecca Johnson in the TV show Full House, but she was also in the movie Rad, and I know we already heard about the stories recently about her. Um, she was in the Nothing to Lose uh, with Martin Lawrence and Tim Robbins. Uh, she was in uh, Jack Frost with Martin, Michael Keaton for The Love of the Game with uh, Kevin Costner. Um, Jerry Maguire with Tom Cruise, Cuba Gooding Jr., and Renee Zellweger. Yeah, that also includes Jay Moore, among others. Yeah, she has, and even the, What a Girl Wants with Amanda Bynes and Colin Firth. She was in a lot of great movies, though. Uh, good or bad, I mean, it doesn't matter what you choose. Uh, but the one movie I'm going to review today, because it's celebrating its 15th anniversary, I can't believe it, ever since it got released, it's going to be the movie that she also stars in, simply called Sky High. It's an amazing, it's a family friendly, but it could also be for teenagers and adults around. Superhero uh, comedy about a high school for superheroes where they can actually teach them how to use their superpowers wisely. And they set up with two groups, heroes and basically hero support known as sidekicks. It's a high school that's all the way up in this really big giant um, school that actually was a library, believe it or not, in Cal State uh, University Northridge that my brother actually attended to. <laughs> yeah, and it looks very beautiful too. I I've been there and I know my family been there and it was like, wow, this was like huge. I can see why they used the backdrop for the film. <laughs> Um, not only is Kelly Preston in the movie, 
and God rest her soul. I mean, she's very beautiful once again, and she will be missed. You got Kurt Russell in the film. Always been best known for playing Snake Pritzkin in Escape from New York. But he's been in several Disney films uh, during his childhood days. And been in other films as well. You know, like Overboard, Executive Decision, uh, Unlawful Entry, The Mean Season, uh, True Dark Blue, among many others that he's been in. Um, he also got uh, Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall. He had a comedian. You have um, Linda Carter, Wonder Woman herself. Also plays Diana Prince <laughs> in the TV series. You know, Full of Grace, Where's the Tiara, The Lasso, this wonderful suit that gives it the American way of, of all, and she fights evil and save everyone and all, yeah. And basically has all the beauty and the strength, and very strong, no doubt. <laughs> okay, okay, I get the idea. Um, yeah, you also got Bruce Campbell playing, always been best known for playing Ash Williams in the Evil Dead films. And then you got like a cast of uh, young actors here, like uh, Michael Adjurano, uh who was started out in a TV show called Cover Me, which was on USA Network. I'm pretty certain no one have known about this, but it's basically a series that's based on a true story of an FBI family. But then he went on to play uh, Jack's supposedly son in the TV show Will and Grace. And then he went on to do films like The Final Season, uh, which is a baseball drama directed by David Mickey Evans you know, from the Sandlot. And he also uh, did the movie The Forbidden Kingdom with Jackie Chan and Jet Li. Yeah, if you remember him. Uh, Danielle Panabaker from the, the miniseries uh, Empire Falls that was on HBO. She's been in several Disney shows and movies I believe and uh, many others. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, yes, who would later went on to play Ramona Victoria Flowers, the love interest of Scott Pilgrim in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. And I know she's been in other films like Final Destination Free, um, the Black Christmas remake from 2006, uh, the Fane prequel, in 2011, 10 Cloverfield Lane, uh, among several others that she's been in. Yeah. And uh, all these other actors uh, joining by that are all familiar with and all became stars later on. Um, and yes, this Blu ray uh, that I got, uh, I bought it at Target uh, for. $10, it was definitely worth it. It's one of the earlier Blu-ray releases, and yes, it does have some features, but unfortunately, not much. It's just, you got the behind-the-scenes look of the film, where they show the making of the film with the cast and crew, but it's only 15 minutes. It could have been a lot longer than that, because I would have loved to see more interviews with the actors and actresses. And the other one is the Breaking Down the Walls, which shows the stunts of, of the film. And yeah, they actually did do their own stunts, but they also had some stunt doubles to join. They actually had to use a lot of, a lot of wire effects, so they make it look like they're actually flying, because they had to blend in with uh, CGI, you know, using the blue screens effects to make it work perfectly. And of course, it just has the movie showcase that just shows like the highlights uh, of several scenes from the movie. Yeah, that's all it is. It even has an alternate opening too, uh, where it all takes place uh, before it all begins. But anyway, Sky High is basically what it is a a, a high school uh, movie for teenagers. You know, focusing on on the heroes 
and the psychics, which is hero supports, that, that's all set in groups. And they're trying to teach them how to use their superpowers wisely. But then sometimes, you know, there are maybe a few that might not have any superpowers until they wind up waiting until, well, a couple days later once you hit to that particular age. But sometimes they probably already have them already without even knowing it. Okay. Uh, but it also led to the fact that their parents um, all started out as superheroes and mostly because they focus on two of the most popular superheroes of them all knowing that they actually had a son who's a late bloomer you know he's trying to fit in with the group but unfortunately he didn't have powers until later on and that's how he's going to become someday a, a very ordinary superhero and that's what the story is about and okay <laughs> you can tell this is very earlier too you can see the, the pamphlets uh, sorry <laughs> it's hard to get this out uh, I don't know why they keep using these uh, it just shows you the scene selections uh, you take the disc out you just get this <laughs> yeah that's just this um, so that's really nice okay, just put this back to the way it was and just put everything exactly how it should be yeah it's just the flyer for blu-rays yeah because everyone wants to experience it okay so uh let's get to the review stars uh, kelly preston kurt russell uh, Michael Adjurano, Danielle Panabaker, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Patrick Warden Burton, yeah, just joining in, uh, Stephen Strait, DJ Daniels, Kelly Vitz, Nicole, Nicholas Braun, Makalika Hack, Jake uh, Sandbig, Will Harris, um, Floris Leachman, yep, Floris Leachman from the TV series Phyllis, and I know she's been doing a lot of stuff in her career, I mean she was even in um, the movie Young Frankenstein, among many others, a very legendary actress, yeah, Linda Carter, Bruce Campbell, Kevin Hefferman, Kim Rhodes, Kevin McDonald, it looks a little bit like Steve Carell, <laughs> but I know it's not him, and Tom Kenny. Yes, Tom Kenny, who also winds up doing the voices of Heifer, as well as Spongebob, you know, in Rocko's Modern Life and Spongebob Squarepants, among many others that he's done, but he's a comedian himself, too. It's written by Paul Hernandez, which is based on his original script um, that he wrote back in the 90s. He's joined in by two writers uh, from the TV series Kim Possible that was on the Disney Channel at the time. Uh, Bob Schooley and Mark McCoylo. And it's directed by Mike Mitchell, you know, who's a sci fi fan. And I know he's a comic book fan too, so this was basically his, his earliest film that he ever done. But I know he went on to do those awful troll trolls movies that we're getting yeah well to me this is his best film in my opinion the movie begins when we meet a young teenager named will stronghold played by michael Antorano, who begins in ninth grade at a local high school that is exclusively for teenagers with superpowers simply called sky high which happens to be the high school that Will's parents had attended to when they were young teenagers, which eventually had became the two world's most famous superheroes of them all, the Commander 
and Jetstream, both played by Kurt Russell and Kelly Preston, which their real names are Steve and Josie. Uh, they actually did have a sidekick who happens to be a teacher named uh, Jonathan Boy, known as All American Boy, played by Dave Foley. And this is exactly what he does um, at class, just teaching all these students, at this rate, the sidekicks, um, how to use their powers and how, how to s try to train force to that someday you'll become the next uh, trio of, or pretty much the entire group of superheroes to join. You know, to stop and rule all evil here. Anyway, so Will does have a best friend who's a very sweet and kind uh, red-headed uh, girl named Layla Williams, played by Danielle Panabaker who secretly has a crush on him and has the power to manipulate plant life, you know, growing flowers and all these other plants and all. Even has the mind to con control them with those powers. But Will was very anxious to attend Sky High and I know he was trying his best to actually be able to build more strength because apparently he's a late bloomer and he doesn't have any superpowers, so he wasn't ready yet. And Sky High, of course, is located directly on a floating campus, which happens to be, as I mentioned, the Alviat Library at uh, Cal State University, Northridge. It was a very uh, wonderful campus to go. And if you actually go to this library, it was huge. I can see why they used the backdrop for the high school and the way they shot that, you know, blending in with CGI and all. Uh, anyway, um, they're joining in with a flying school bus uh, filled with students. We actually had this nice uh, bus driver named uh, Ron Wilson, who's played by Kevin Hefferman. Yeah, Kevin Hefferman, for those who don't know, was been in all these uh, Broken Lizard films, <laughs> you know, like Super Troopers, as well as uh, uh, Beer Fest, and yes, the Dukes of Hazard remake. But he's very funny. I love him. On his first day at high school, he joins in with all these other ninth graders. Um, which unfortunately were being harassed by school bullies. You can definitely see the story here. Uh, one, you have Speed, who's a overweight senior with super speed, and Lash, who's a, a skinny senior who's who has the extreme flexibility, and he can also stretch too. So because of what Will's lack of power is uh, suggested, he actually joins in for the curriculum of Hero Support, which is Sidekicks, um, which is joined by Coach Boomer, played by Bruce Campbell. Uh, we also got a principal named simply uh, Powers, who is uh, played by Linda Carter. Yep, she's very sweet. And she actually has the power to change into a luminous energy form to resemble a comet in, a, in that back of Will. Yeah, she even has a detention hall where it can actually drain all these superpowers. And you have to be in there, to, and it's that white room, so you have to be in there just, just to think about what you did. And we're going to get to that too. Um... So, his classmates that we join in, too, uh, we have Ethan, it's, it's a, who's a, a nerdish um, kind of guy who melts into fluid. Uh, Zach, who glows in the dark. Uh, he's a very tall guy. Uh, Magenta, who actually transforms into a guinea pig. <laughs> and... And... 
of course, Leia, <clears throat> and of course, Layla joins in with them. So they're in the protests of going to a two-track nature of the school's education system, and meaning that they're going to be able to use their powers, you know, actually just, you know, control them and all, and actually play some games. You know, like, for example, they're going to play a superhero game where they, they team up, they're about to save um, a victim by all these villains. So once this this victim is trapped inside this um, this crusher, <laughs> they're gonna be able to stop them just in time, so they'll be able to catch the the victim. And that was the case too. It's, it was a tag team uh, particular uh, system here. Also. Um, but of course, um, there's a class where they, they're being taught by commanders, um, by all-American boy, you know, Dave Foley, and um, they're just teaching them how to do exactly what they can. You also got Professor Molo from uh, the Heroes class, goes around teaching all these students how to build and create. Yeah, and he has that uh, giant egghead uh, brain of his. I mean, he's, he's so intelligent, you know, he pretty much knows too much. But then um, we meet Nurse Specs, who's played by Clorch Leachman, which Will basically learns that not everyone can get their powers. And you know, that's why they, she's showing all the demonstration using those uh, lollipops and, and the popsicle stick. Because uh, they have a rare case that, for those who have both parents with superpowers, that they might not inherit it to them until later. And at that point on, he will become a hybrid. And that's how it happened when, yeah, when during lunch uh, at the cafeteria, eventually um, Speed and Lash just uh, started to bully the, the kids and went on to Will which then suddenly they meet this War and Peace uh, who's um, or War and Peace who's <laughs> played by Stephen Strait who was basically supposed to be a super villain but uh, of course he'll become a, a superhero himself um, but he actually shoots um, flames with his fist, so he has the power to actually control using all these fire balls and throws it directly at will. And this is where they have this huge um, cafeteria fight, only to discover that will actually gains his strength with superpower. So now he can actually lift and actually can take care of this bully, you know, just stop him, and also can stop uh, both Speed and Lash altogether until they both got into bigger trouble, being sent to the principal's office by Principal Powers. Yeah, inside this particular room, this white room, drained with the powers. So. Um, there's also a, a new girl in class which actually has a crush on Will and her name is um, Gwen Grayson who's uh, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Uh, basically she just falls in love with him and, and then sooner or later Will wants up joining in the heroes class and that's where they both decided to work a project together, such as the Zap Gun. And we learned that uh, her power was, well, she actually used Technopathy. So that means she'll be able to use uh, her powers to, to build a lot of uh, technology and everything. And there's going to be a spoiler alert on this review because now we're going to be able to learn
the valuable truth about her character. And, but before I get to that, I'm just going to talk more about what happens. Therefore, um, she wanted to invite uh, Will to a, a homecoming dance by actually celebrating, well, first to have a party at his house. So this will be the beginning of of the homecoming dance so they can go around um, joining in with the rest of the teenagers and all. Uh, Will, on the other hand, um, was going to hang out with um, Layla at a local Chinese restaurant, which we then learned that War and Peace actually works there. But he didn't show up because um, Will somehow uh, I went straight to his house um, and actually invited uh, Gwen to, um, you know, just um, you know, talk about all their past lives because both uh, Steve and Josie were in high school and they remember all the times that they had just reading a yearbook and everything. Uh, also, I began to find out already that, because <laughs> I'm going to mention it already, that. Um, they actually got a, a secret sanctum that Steve uh, loves to show uh, Will because this is the first time he ever enters since he, he didn't show it to him you know, during his entire childhood was that they actually had a, a very cool place. I mean they actually have a pool table, you know, video games and all this other activities that he loves to do. So like whenever they have some time, also because they collect a lot of uh, gadgets and maybe they they even found this particular zap gun which happens to be known as the pacifier because uh, what happened was um, in the past uh, both uh, Commander and Jetstream uh, were fighting against uh, their arch enemy Royal Pain who was joined in with a sidekick who happens to be basically a joker <laughs> and it goes around choking him every time <laughs> you know he throws in a punchline um, but War Pain is is a villain who just basically takes over the world and about to go after and capture both Commander and All-American Boy until Jetstream shows up we also learned that both Steve and Josie uh, work for real estate, you know, just serving um, for all um, people around, no matter what, you know, on buying their own homes. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. But then that's what leads to what happens too when, well, Gwen basically throws a party at Will's house. Meanwhile, um, Layla was all alone, you know, just having Chinese food, just hoping that Will was going to show up, but Warren came, just apparently came up with a plan to actually make Will jealous. And they're, at this point on, they're both going to end up uh, attending the, the homecoming dance. But things seem to get worse when... All of a sudden, after Wills brought uh, Gwen inside um, the Secret Sanctum, that's where the the Zap Gun, the pacifier, got taken away. And then we begin to learn the secret here was that Gwen apparently uh, lied to uh, Layla as she showed up that Will doesn't want to see her anymore, having her break up. And this is where Will just decided he just had enough. He wants everybody out, including her. And he's not gonna not gonna go to the homecoming. But well both uh, Steve and Josie wanted him to go anyway because that way they could support them and everyone else. And that's where by the time the homecoming arrived yeah, everybody was there, and then we learned that, yes, this is where we led to the secret, was that Gwen 
is actually Royal Pain. Yeah, and you can actually hear the voice of Patrick Warburton. <laughs> so people thought it was a guy, but it was actually a girl. Because um, it turns out that she was actually de-aged. This was the same girl that that they all met beyond her sequence that she actually started out as a young woman, a teenager, who actually came up with her own uh, telepathy and you know, just creating all these uh, weapons that she did so that way she'll be able to rule the entire world and become the arch villain of, of all. And it looked to me like she uses the, the pacifier to de-age her so that means that at this point on she was an old lady the whole time. <laughs> yeah, which led to that joke. That's when Will actually discovered who she really was through the yearbook, knowing that she looked very familiar. And that's when um, he came to the rescue, joining in with uh, Ron, the bus driver, to go all the way to Sky High to stop him before it's too late, because that's when we noticed that you know, World Pain just uses the pacifier to turn everyone into newborn babies. So now, Will joining in with uh, the hero support crew, they're together to stop all the rest of these uh, bad guys. That also joins in with the, the the black cheerleaders. Yeah, and it, and also of course the two bullies. They even join in with um, War and Peace, so now they can be able to fight against them and be able to save the world, or at this rate, the high school, from blowing up. And, and also be able to stop uh, War of Pain from her game. And everything will. And once uh, Will and, and this group uh, save ev the entire school and, it, and everyone, the rest of them into detention and now well things went back to normal <laughs> and it's a very fun um, entertaining movie um, definitely um, had a very smart intelligent script it really blends it there the characters definitely play exactly as it was written um, the way they were portrayed, I mean, they were all excellent. I mean, it was fun to see all your favorites joining in, like Kurt Russell, Kelly Preston, Linda Carter, uh, Bruce Campbell, Dave Foley, and all the rest just, just having fun, you know? There's not even a single bad performance whatsoever, and they really played it straight. I mean, because it could have been worse, actually. And yeah, I, I laughed too, and, and it was hilarious at times. And there was a lot of great moments. And yes, some of them had cliches here and there. It may have some silly plots. Oh no, it, it works. Uh, the cinematography, uh, which was done by, hard to believe, Shelley Johnson, I mean, who was a collaborator with uh, director Joe Johnston, actually uh, created some beautiful luscious um, with vivid colors and all and using all these tilted shots to make it look like you know you're really in for the world and um, the score was done by Michael Cicino yes if you're familiar with this composer he did a lot of scores for several movies that follow uh, the only nitpick I have with the movie though was the soundtrack um, that blends in with 80s music that are particularly cover versions. I mean, I, I love 80s music, don't get me wrong, though, because, you know, they're always fun to listen to. But I thought the cover version sounds pretty odd. It, it didn't quite fit the story the way it, it turns out to be. I know they tend to put in the song True, you know, like whenever uh, Gwen arrives, I mean, now you know that where was blushing I mean whenever she shows up and I know she's very beautiful 
Um, I just wish they had played some regular 80s music done by the original artists rather than just being, you know, several different artists out there. It, it just doesn't fit. Uh, although there are a few songs that did work. Um, I know they... Although I, I gotta say, they did manage to throw in one song that was from Devo that's actually done by They Might Be Giants. Um, I love They Might Be Giants, and I know they had one song, Voices Carried by Vitamin C. Yeah, the, uh, the singer who was from that band, Eve's Plum. But she went on to do on her own. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, they really needed to do a lot better for that. But, yeah. But, hey, I guess that's how everyone felt when they saw this. But it's fun. I mean, it, it plays exactly a bit of a hybrid of of the Incredibles and all these other superheroes. Yeah. Even Marvel superheroes in DC. <laughs> yeah. And of course, that's why I explain I'm still wearing the Avengers shirt here. <laughs> I mean, I love superheroes. I mean, in general. They're, they're always fun. You know, comic books and all. And it's it's amazing too because ironically Disney would later buy Marvel and then they end up doing their own movies uh, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this was sort of a nod there too. Um, but it had a wonderful direction by Mike Mitchell. He definitely knows what he's doing. I mean, this was a dream for him to to team up with all these actors, and it's nice to have smart writing. Since it is a comic book feel to it, I mean, for a superhero movie, I mean, yes, they even throw in some comic book sequences from the beginning and all the way to the end, so it, it shows. So, I mean, it, it, had, it had a lot of ton of cheek humor right there. It, it works. I mean, I like the moment, too, where they have a bit of a father and son uh, relationship, too, when he found out that he actually has powers. And then, because <laughs> I know you saw the trailer too, I mean, well, it's, it's a nice little stroke the trailer, was when he was like hugging him and he actually cracked his bones and then and then suddenly he, he hugs him and he cracked his bones and then he realized, you are strong. <laughs> you know, the moment with um, you know, Steve and Will, I mean, that's just amazing. And, of course, finding out about what just was going on too. I mean that one particular scene when he didn't have any powers and and he had to be stuck uh, with uh, the sidekicks um, support. He ends up <laughs> you know trying to call Coach Boomer and the <laughs> and he actually just keeps uh, breaking the the cell phones. <laughs> Every time he tries to call because he has a whole bunch of them and and there's a lot of nice moments too, you know, with both Commander and Jet Stream. Of course, Jet Stream can fly, and Commander can actually just go around punching this uh, this giant uh, robot you know, in the city, which that will lead to you know World Pain and the Joker suspecting them. Oh, and there's also a bit of a Wonder Woman reference too, uh, with Principal Powers, uh, especially at the end of the movie. At the climax, when when they finally capture World Pain and the rest, send them inside the detention hall. <laughs> she actually says, "I'm not Wonder Woman." Yeah, I thought that was pretty clever. Surprisingly, did pretty well at the box office. Only made 86.4 million out of its 35 million budget, and. Um, they were actually planning on doing a sequel to this, but that never happened. Same goes with the TV series that they were hoping. That'd be nice, but I don't think that's ever going to happen anyway. If that's the case, but... Because it's not going to be the same. I, I think it'd be better off just being standalone. Because it works. And I'll definitely say it's a much better film than Zoom that followed uh, a year after, which is focusing on the Academy for Superheroes, the one with Tim Allen, Courtney Cox, and J. 
Chevy Chase. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that one. That's too bad because it did have writer at a Rickon. And I guess he pretty much how he felt when he wrote this. Or the way the studio turned out to be. You know, with the interference and all. You know, they have to do a lot of changes these days. But this is the real deal. And if you must watch Sky High, it's fun. You'll love it. Especially if you're a comic book superhero fan. Anyway, that's the movie, and I give it a solid, amazing, hilarious, excellent five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.